Hi friends, Mrs. Simic here. We are going to continue on with that first lesson as we get to know a little bit more about fiction. What is fiction? What are the different types of fiction? So yesterday was pretty exciting. We had three separate books that we took a look, just a little preview about, and we talked about how one was realistic fiction. You know, the character was believable. Uh, one was an example of mythology with the gods and goddesses, one of my favorites. And then the other one was, a real, um, was an example of a folk tale passed down from generation to generation as we got to know a little bit more about that greedy spider, right? Now, we're gonna continue talking about different kinds of fiction today. And before we kind of jump into our lesson, let's just quickly review over those different types of fiction. So yesterday we talked about first, we kind of introduced you how you had fantasy fiction, make-believe stories, science fiction that could have some kind of involvement with science or technology, realistic, how it could happen in the real, in real life, historical, it's a fictional story, but maybe it's based on something that's actually happened in history. And then our great suspenseful stories of our mystery fiction, where there's some kind of problem to solve or case to crack. Um, yesterday, like I said before, we looked at a folk tale. Oh, the fairy tales, usually they start with once upon a time. Our tall tales, this is kind of a, an American folk tale style that um, where we stretch the truth out a little bit um, and make it uh, a little unbelievable. Um, so where it may be called a fish that was tall as a house, right? So stretching the truth. These great legends that, again, are based on historical events, um, maybe kind of try to explain uh, why something had happened. A fable, again, kind of like a folk tale, but it has to do more with animals as our characters. And there's usually some kind of theme or moral lesson to learn. And then we've already discussed, of course, our, our gods and goddesses with mythology. Now, today what we're going to do is kind of fun here. We're going to revisit two books by the author that we are currently exploring here and learning more about in our writing time, in our writer's workshop. And as we already know, who's the author we're studying right now? It's Cynthia Ryland, one of my favorites. Now, I've pulled two of her books here off my shelf for you. And uh, we have the book Scarecrow, and we have the book The Relatives Came. Okay. Now, in your Google Classroom, I have included a Google Doc. All right. It's a big chart. And what I want you to do in that chart is you're going to type in these two separate titles, and we're going to talk about what makes them this type of fiction. What were the clues? Now, the chart's not going to be full, so I want you in your own independent time, maybe add some books that you've already read that you feel like you could explain what kind of fiction that story may be. Okay, so let's get started here, and we're going to take a look at our two different books today. So like I said before, in your Google Doc, all right, at the end of this lesson, we're gonna type in Scarecrow. Obviously, we know who our, our author is here. And we're gonna type in When the Relatives Came. And again, it's Cynthia Ryland here for our author. All right, so together, we're gonna to figure out what kind of fiction is Scarecrow, what kind of fiction is When the Relatives Came, and we need to work together to figure out what is it the clues, what are the clues that help us decide that? Like I said before, there's plenty of room for you to add some fiction books that maybe you've already read. So let's get started here with Scarecrow first as I pull this up. All right, Scarecrow, written by Cynthia Ryland. His hat is borrowed, his suit is borrowed, his hands are borrowed, even his head is borrowed, and his eyes probably came from someone's drawer. But a Scarecrow's life is all his own. It takes a certain peace hanging around a garden all day. It takes a love of silence and air, a liking for long, slow thoughts, a friendliness towards birds. Yes, birds, crows, crackles, starlings, jays, and them, how they feel about a scarecrow and how they'll say lovely. They ignore the pie pan hands and the button eyes and see instead the scarecrow's best gift, his gentleness. They line up his arms and they can chat all day long. He knows he isn't real. A scarecrow understands right away that he's just borrowed parts made to look like somebody. But he knows this too, that there's a certain wonder going on around him. Seeds are being planted and inside there's 10 foot tall sunflowers and mammoth pumpkins and beans that just go on forever. And though the scarecrow knows that he can as quickly he be turned back into straw and buttons as he was turned into a man, he doesn't care. 
He has been with the owls in evening and the rabbits all dawn at dawn. He has watched the spider work for hours, making a web like lace. He has seen the sun tremble and the moon lie still. The scarecrow doesn't care what he's made of or how long he might last, for he has, a, he has been a witness to life. The earth has rained and snowed and blossomed and wilted and yellowed and greened and vined itself all around him. His hat has housed mice and his arms have rested birds. A morning glory has held tight to his legs and a worm living in his lapel. There's not much else a person might want, and the scarecrow knows this. So he doesn't mind that there's always a smile on his face or his eyes are always open. He doesn't mind being high. He doesn't mind staying there. The sun is brushing his borrowed head, and the sun is warming his borrowed hands, and the clouds are floating across his button-borrowed eyes. The scarecrow's thinking his long, slow thoughts. And soon birds will be coming by. <laughs> All right, so for our scarecrow here, okay? So let's think back. If I go back to my chart for us, Hmm, what kind of fiction is this? Well, the scarecrow looks realistic, right? The farm looks realistic. And the scenery looks like a pretty typical realistic country scenery, but there's something a little different. Our scarecrow has thoughts, doesn't he? Okay, so let's write down some clues first before we reveal. All right, so the scarecrow wonders, okay, and has thoughts. What else do we notice about our scarecrow? Hmm. He watches the life around him, right? So let's ask ourselves, can scarecrows think? Can they observe the life around them? No, they're not living things, are they? But it's kind of cool that we get to hear the story from the Scarecrow's point of view. And I love that about Cynthia Riley, how she can be so creative that way. So with this type of fiction, although it looks pretty realistic from the illustrations, I would definitely classify this as being fantasy because we're hearing the story. The Scarecrow is the one explaining the story to me. So I wouldn't be able to put it as realistic. I would say that's more of a fantasy type of, of fictional story here. Okay. All right, so we have one more we're going to read together and try to figure out what type of fiction we would think it would fall under. Here we go. Pulling up. The Relatives came. Again, one that I know Mrs. Northam has already read to you guys, but let's read it again because it's so great by Cynthia Ryland. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left with their grapes, were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car, and in it they put an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers, some bologna sandwiches, and up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark, before even the birds were awake. They drove all day long and into the night, and while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and different mountains, and they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia. But they thought about us, too, waiting for them. So they drank up all their pop and ate up all their crackers, and they traveled up those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. Then it was hugging time, time about talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us around their car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. And finally, after a big supper, two or three times around until we got a turn at the table, there was quiet talk and we were in twos and threes through the house. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since there weren't any extras, so a few squeezed in with us and the rest left on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. It was different going to sleep with all the new breathing in the house. <laughs> the relatives stayed for weeks and weeks and they helped us tend the garden and they fixed any broken things they could find. They ate up all our strawberries and melons, and they promised we could eat up their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. 
Whoops, we're loading, we're loading. Here we go. But none of us thought about Virginia much. We were so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. Finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded up their ice chests and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in their pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road, and then we crawled back into our bed that felt too big and too quiet, and we fell asleep. The relatives drove on all day long and into the night, and while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses in the different mountains, and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us too, missing them, and they missed us. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent soft beds and dreamed about the next summer. <laughs> love, love, love that story. All right, so when we go back here, okay, to our chart that you guys are filling out with me here. When the relatives came, let's think about some of the clues of what we learned about in this particular story, okay? So we had a family, okay, that, what did the family do? Okay, they drove, right, to visit their relatives, okay? And what can you tell me about that trip? Was there anything fantasy-like that happened, or was it pretty realistic of when family members get to together? Did they do some of the things that you do with your family members? I know when my family gets together, there's a lot of hugging. I like how she calls it hugging time. And boy, do we eat and we talk and we catch up because we miss each other so much. Okay. So the, um, the events were things that we do in real life, right? When we see our relatives. It was pretty realistic, wasn't it? Mrs. Simic and type. Silly Mrs. Simic. Okay. Here we go. So I filled that in our chart. Let's revisit what I said. Family, okay. Oops, I need to put in a word in there. Let's add that word in. A family, okay. Let me take out the word that. Nothing wrong with a little proofreading there. A family drove to visit their relatives. The events are things that we do in real life when we see our relatives. Hugging, laughing, eating, playing games together, right? So as far as the type of fiction goes, what would you classify this as? Let's pull this away. I definitely would say this is a good example of realistic fiction. All right, friends. So as I wrap this up here, do not forget from yesterday, I did give you that Google slide as an optional assignment to do. Feel free to finish that up, kind of classifying the different types of fiction there. Um, what I would love for you to do is make sure you fill this chart out, okay, in your Google Classroom assignment. Add maybe one or two more, okay? Maybe you can fill up the whole chart with different fictional stories that you have that you could explain to me whether what type of fiction it would be. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right, and stay tuned as we continue to talk a little bit more about these fictional stories. All right.